You know, out of all the different Pokemon there are, so many are just mundane real things. Bugs, fish, unusually colored ducks, and of course Solosis, which I covered in the very first video on this channel. There are so many different varieties of Pokemon we could look into, but today we'll be delving into the many electric type Pokemon and looking into what makes them so shocking. Hello everybody and welcome to the Science of, where today we'll be taking a look at the science behind electric type Pokemon, seeing what makes them able to carry and produce an electrical charge and then going on to compare some electric type Pokemon with their real world equivalents, explaining how real world animals can have similar abilities as those shown in game. There are 72 electric type Pokemon split between all 8 generations of Pokemon, meaning that electric type Pokemon, or Pokemon with electric as part of their dual typing, makes up only 8.2% of Pokemon. Fun fact, when looking through Pokemon types for this video, it turns out that the most prominent type of Pokemon throughout all 8 generations is actually water type Pokemon, making up 144 out of the 893 total Pokemon. That's over 16% of all Pokemon. Pretty surprising, right? So let's jump right into the science of electric Pokemon. The first thing we need to understand is, what is electricity? It's something we use every day, but most people wouldn't really give it a second thought. You put a plug in a wall, flick a switch and then boom, you have near infinite varieties of entertainment to take up entire days and nights. So we're going to start with the most basic ideas of electricity. Electricity is a form of energy, and energy can be split into two main groups, kinetic energy and potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. This comes in many forms, such as chemical energy stored in food and fuels, elastic energy stored in stretched or compressed objects, nuclear energy stored in a particle's nuclei, and gravitational energy which is stored in an object held above ground level. Kinetic energy, on the other hand, is the name given to energy released from these potential energy sources. In other words, it's the energy of movement. This includes thermal energy, which is created by vibrating particles, mechanical energy used by objects in motion, magnetic energy used in the interaction or repulsion of magnetic items, and finally we have a mix of both and a topic of today's video, electrical energy. Electrical energy is a form of kinetic energy as it involves the movement of charge carriers or electrons through a wire. The faster these electrons are moving, the greater their electrical energy. This energy can be measured by the energy source's ability to do work or apply force to move an object. In the case of electrical energy, the force produced is electromagnetic attraction or repulsion between charged objects such as protons and neutrons. The movement of these particles through a wire, or any other conductive medium, is called a current. However, there is also static electricity, the potential form of this energy, which results in an imbalance of the positive and negative charges on an object. If sufficient charge builds up on this object, the electrical energy produced may be discharged in the form of lightning, as seen in Van de Graaff generators and Tesla coils. Now of course, when we think of electric type Pokemon, you'd most likely think of one of the many, many electric rodents found across the Pokemon regions. Pikachu, Raichu, Pichu, Plusle, Minim, Pachirisu, Emolga, Dedene, Togemaru, and finally more Pico. Now you may think that, seeing as these shocking rodents make up 13% of electric Pokemon, then there would be a pretty deep relationship between rodents and electricity. Well, there isn't. The original Kanto electric rodents, Pikachu and Raichu, are actually just based off Japanese puns, with Pikachu's name being a combination of Pika Pika, the Japanese onomatopoeia for sparkles, and Chu Chu, the sound of mouse mates, and Raichu being a combination of the Japanese word for thunder, Rai, and the same Chu Chu. So what is the relationship between these rodents and electricity? Well, it pretty much boils down to mice enjoying the warmth that electricity produces as well as chewing on electrical wires being a good way for mice to sharpen their teeth. So there we go, there's no real relation between rodents and electricity. But what about the non-rodent electric Pokemon? How about we start by looking at Pinkachin? This electric Pokemon was introduced in Pokemon Generation 8, and resembles, as the name implies, a sea urchin. Specifically, it resembles Echinometra Mathei, otherwise known as the burrowing urchin, having the same dark body with lighter spikes. Now, this may seem like an odd choice for a Pokemon of the Galar region, which is so heavily based around the UK, seeing as this species of sea urchin is normally found in more tropical oceans, specifically the Indo-Pacific Ocean, 
Ironically, it would have done well in Generation 7's Alola region, alongside a sea cucumber Pokemon, Puku Muku. Now, I did look at the shiny version of Pin Urchin to see if there was a UK based sea urchin that it resembled, but unfortunately I didn't really find anything. With the most common species of sea urchin around the UK and most of Europe being the common sea urchin which is green in colour. But then, what link do sea urchins have to electricity? Well, a study from 2004 looked into the effect of static magnetic currents on the early development of the burrowing urchin. Static magnetic fields are constant magnetic fields which do not change in intensity or direction over time, and are made whenever electricity is used in the form of a direct current or DC. These are commonly used in magnetic resonant imaging or MRIs to produce 3D images of soft body tissues. When exposed to these static magnetic fields, it was observed that increasing the strength of the magnetic field resulted in abnormalities in sea urchin eggs, even after 15 minutes. This suggests a strong relationship between these urchins and electromagnetic fields. Continuing this journey through aquatic electric Pokemon, we have Gen 2's Pokemon Chinchu and Lantern, which are clearly inspired by anglerfish, specifically the anglerfish Himantolophus groenlandicus, otherwise known as the football fish. Now, you may be thinking that the light on top of Lantern's head is caused by the electric part of its dual typing, but this is not the case. In fact, Lantern's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Ruby states, Lantern is named a deep sea star for its illuminated antenna. This Pokemon produces light by causing a chemical reaction between bacteria and its bodily fluid inside the antenna. Now, believe it or not, this is possibly the most scientifically accurate Pokedex entry in the whole series, because this is exactly how football fishes Esca, their phosphorescent bulbs, become luminous. These light emitting or photobacteria flow into their Esca through small pores, and once they're inside they replicate. Furthermore, the reason given for why they gather in this bulb is due to the protection and nutrients provided to them by the host football fish, in a great example of a mutualistic relationship. So, to conclude our journey through the many electric Pokemon, let's take a look at the electric Pokemon Tynamo, Electric and Electros. These serpentine electric Pokemon are, like Lantern, based around real world sea life, specifically the electric eel. With Tynamo resembling Leptocephalus, the larval stage of eels, Electric of course resembling an electric eel itself, and finally Electros, once again based around an electric eel, but with arms. You may think the name Electric Eel is simply just the name, but that is not the case. In fact, many aquatic creatures featuring the electric eel, electric catfish, electric rays and stargazers all exhibit an electricity generating ability called bioelectrogenesis. Bioelectrogenesis, as the name implies, is the biological production of electricity. All cells produce a small amount of this energy as a part of its second to second activity. Now, a quick warning, this can get quite technical so I apologise if I lose you somewhere along the way. In these biological cells, electrochemically active transmembrane ion channels and transporter proteins such as the sodium potassium pump found in most nerve cells and neurons are able to generate electricity thanks to the fact that they maintain a volt imbalance between the intracellular and intracellular space. The sodium potassium pump simultaneously releases three sodium plus ions away from the intracellular space, at the same time drawing two potassium plus ions towards the intracellular space. It generates an electric potential gradient, though at the cost of some metabolic energy in the form of ATP. Eels have specialised electrical organs with many alternating compartments, separated by a selective membrane with each compartment having either an excess of potassium or sodium ions. The release of this energy can happen in a variety of different ways dependent on the species. But in the case of the electric eel, these large electrical currents are the result of a highly specialised nervous system. This has the capacity to synchronise the activity of disc shaped cells packed into its electrical organ. This charge is triggered using a command nucleus which decides when the electrical organ will fire. Consider it like a switch. When the command is given, a complex array of nerves will make sure that the thousands of cells activate at once. 
This may seem like a large number of cells, but you need to remember that each electrogenic cell will only produce a negative charge of 100 millivolts. Meaning that to equal the charge of just one AA battery, you'd only need 15 of these cells. When the signal is given, these nerves release a minute amount of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter that creates a transient path with low electrical resistance, connecting the inside and the outside of one side of the cell, causing the cell to act like a battery, with one side carrying a negative charge and the other a positive charge. This causes the charge of the cell to shock its neighbours into action, creating a domino line of activation over the course of about 1 or 2 milliseconds, simultaneously starting a short-lived current which flows throughout the eel's body and shocking nearby predators or prey. Now, you may be wondering why eels can do this without shocking themselves. Well, it's something scientists are trying to figure out as well. One theory at the moment suggests that a large proportion of the current dissipates into the water through the eel's skin, reducing the current going through internal structures like the central nervous system or heart. But don't get me wrong, this ability is still pretty powerful, being able to generate up to 860 volts and is used in hunting, self-defense and even communication at lower voltages. But it does put a lot of strain on the eel, meaning that they have a limited number of strikes they can do. So there we go, a little background information on the many electrical Pokemon and their relationships to this shocking energy. From the static sensing insects to the electrifying eels, there are many ways that creatures use electricity in their day to day survival. If only humans could do the same. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any particular scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. Then if you want more content from me, then check out my gaming channel where I take a look at a different indie game 3 times a week. Or if you prefer live streams, then check out my Twitch channel where I live stream once again 3 times a week. And finally, if you want to support the channel even further, then you could also contribute to my Patreon. As a patron, you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all aspects of the science of videos, including script writing, editing, thumbnail designs, and all assets I make for the show, as well as being able to vote on the next science of video. But until then, this has been the science of electric Pokemon. I'll see you next time.